Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Corbell webinar series. Today, we are very pleased to have with us Jan Willem Beute from Ligature and Menno de Vries from the Netherlands Cancer Institute. And they'll present to us um, genomics and clinical data, your fingertips with open source software, Transmart and CBio portal. My name is Vera Matzer, and I'm involved in the Corbell project on behalf of Embel EBI, and I'll host the webinar today. I'll also be manning the question function. Before we get started, I want to make you aware that the webinar is being recorded. That includes question and answer session at the end of the webinar. We'll be sharing the video and this after the session on the Corbell YouTube channel and on the Corbell website. We've reserved some time at the end um, of the session for questions. And what I'd like you to do is to write your questions in the question function of the GoToWebinar panel, as you can see on the screen, through them um, at the end. I'll briefly introduce the Corbell project to you. So Corbell is, the, is a Horizon 2020 funded project, bringing together 13 research infrastructures in the biomedical science. Uh, the aim of Corbell is tra to transform the understanding of biological mechanisms and to help lead them into medical care. Now, modern biological research uh, involves complex projects, which often combine a variety of different technologies and operate at the interface between different disciplines. The aim of Corbell is to help these projects by harmonizing access and services for research involving more than one research infrastructure. So that could be biological and medical technologies, biological samples or data services. Our first presenter today is Jan Willem Beute. He's a program manager at Ligature in Utrecht in the Netherlands. He has more than 20 years experience supporting biologists in the pharmaceutical industry and academia data and IT solutions that have attracted large user communities. In his current role, he leads several national data infrastructure programs and the IT work packages associated with those programs. These include the Translational Research IT or TRAIT project, the National Data Infrastructure for Biomarker Research, BBMRI Netherlands, the National Biobanking Infrastructure, and Data for Life Sciences, the National Data Infrastructure Collaboration between the Dutch University Medical Centers. And in addition, he's a project member in several EU projects and infrastructures, which includes Corbel and also Iatris. Jan Willem received a PhD in chemistry from the Radboud Universiteit in Nijmegen, and he completed his thesis on the topic of computer methods in organic synthesis design. Our second presenter is Menno de Vries. He is a data steward at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. He's experienced with aiding researchers in working towards fair data by assisting them in the preparation and curation of their generated data. He's especially involved with readying the data for import of processed and final data to the data integration platforms Transmart and CBio Portal. In the past, he's been involved in the complex documentation, logistics, and data registry of numerous clinical trials. And Menno received an MSc in biomedical sciences from the Universiteit of Utrecht. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Jan Willem. So good afternoon, everybody. OK. Um, so what I will do is give you a brief uh, introduction on how we started uh, with these uh, open source tools, Transmart and CBioPortal, and how they fit into the larger context of uh, what we're doing in, uh, in the Netherlands. And then I will hand over to Menno, who will give you uh, a real life uh, overview of these tools. And he will try to, uh, to demo this live, uh, which is very courageous of him. Uh, um, so I will take you back quite a few, yeah. Uh, more than 10 years, so once upon a time in the Netherlands, when we had a very large uh, research project um, called the Center for Translational Molecular Medicine, which was a program with uh, a r around 300 million euros budget in the area of biomarker research, which is a very large budget for a small country like the Netherlands. And we had large consortia in different disease areas um with many institutions working on uh, particular uh, diagnostics 
And what we found out after a few years in this program is that all these um, projects had a similar projects uh, problems in their IT. So what you typically see in these uh, these projects is that you have multimodal um, research programs. You have uh, clinical research, you have imaging, you have uh, different omics uh, techniques. You have your samples in the biobank, and uh, you uh, this is dispersed over different institutes. And uh, when you do that, you get uh, very common IT problems. Um, yeah, like um, how to collaborate. You have only local solutions. The culture of data sharing is missing. How to integrate that data? How to make the uh, a, surf, a sustainable and reliable surface where you can access the data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, that's where uh, basically trade started because what you would like to have is something that um, uh, yeah, Apple and Google have organized for ourselves in uh, in the mobile world where you have a, a, an ecosystem, where you have different apps, different tools that collaborate, that interact, uh, but um, are not necessarily supplied by, um, by Google or Apple, but are supplied by others. Uh, and that's what we try to accomplish uh, in, in, uh, in trade, which I will uh, dive a bit deeper in. Um, and what we did initially is make a high level analysis of the process in these, uh, in these projects. And you saw the same process across disease areas, across cancer, cardiovascular, where uh, in these biomarker projects, you see an outcome, a clinical phenotype type, um, and that you want to correlate to uh, the, the underlying disease biology. Yeah? So some uh, patients have a, a favorable outcome, other patients have an unfavorable outcome, uh, and on the first side, they look very similar. So there's something different in their disease uh, biology, and you want to find biomarkers for it. So, so that's the high-level design of these projects. And then you uh, dive one step deeper, you get this, uh, this overview uh, of the data, underlying data flow that you need to support in the, in the ecosystem, in the app store. Uh, so the patient enters the study, you collect uh, the clinical data. Is my, my cursor visible? Can I? Point something? Yeah, I can see. Yeah. OK, great. Um, and so uh, you, you collect your clinical data, you collect your uh, imaging data, your samples, your uh, experimental data, and then you want to integrate. And that's the heart of these projects. And that's where you need, for that integration, you need a common IT framework. And that's what we are talking about today. Uh, and that's also something we um, we had to create in the Corbell project, where we basically brought in this uh, this best practice from the Netherlands and tried to generalize for for these kinds of projects. Um, um, so when you go to the trade website, we basically try to create these uh, this app store, um, and we did this on the basis of open source solutions. So um, we didn't develop the solutions ourselves but we try to provide an ecosystem of open source solutions that were well accepted in the world and that um, um, were made available to uh, our research programs. And that's what you see here. You see the same uh, process, uh, the, the clinical data, the imaging data, the sample data, experimental data, and then here the data integration layer. Uh, with the, the two tools um, we are talking about today, see Bioporto and Transmart. And before I dive into those tools, just a quick word on how uh, things are interacting in this app store. So, and I take Open Clinica as an example. So we use Open Clinica as an open source service for uh, clinical data capture. And when you look at how Open Clinica is integrated with the other tools, you see uh, uh, quite a few integrations. And so we integrate with LDOT, which is a tool for clinical trial logistics. Uh, we interact with a tool for pathology imaging sharing. We interact with Transmart, so you can upload your clinical data to Transmart, as, uh, the data integration tool. And we, uh, we interact with XNet, the, uh, the image archive. And we use op open interfaces uh, for these, um, these interactions. So it's, um, it's not that you have to use all the tools to get things working. But um, we use open interfaces. So for example, the interface between Open Clinica and Transmart, we use the CDISC ODM um, 
uh, interface. And when you want to use another tool than Open Clinica, uh, for example, RedCap as the, as the data capture tool, you can still upload your clinical data to Transmart. Uh, so it's really um, a pick and choose in this, uh, in this app store, whether you want to use the standard tools offering or whether you use your own tool. So that's about uh, yeah, the way we organize things with open source tools. And now let's dive into um, the, the, the common framework as we are creating uh, for, for Corbel and, um, and uh, with CBioPortal and Transmart as the central uh, data integration tools. First, some words about Transmart as a product. So it, it, it is first of all a data warehouse where you bring together your clinical and your genomics uh, data and, um, and you can use it um, as a um, hypothesis generator. So the data sets are available at your fingertips and you can really play with the data. Um, it, it is targeted both to, to clinicians and bioinformaticians. Um, it's really a way to make more complex bioinformatics uh, data accessible to non-experts uh, like clinical experts. Huh? And in practice, it's used both in pharma and in a more uh, institutional hospital uh, setting. Uh, originally, it was developed by uh, Johnson & Johnson, uh, so the big pharma company. Uh, they uh, developed it for their own internal uh, biomarker uh, translational research programs to share the data internally. And they made it open source um, about uh, seven years ago and uh, made it available to the community yeah, because they thought it was not their core business to maintain it and they want to uh, maintain together with uh, other companies. By, um, by the end of that year and the beginning of the year thereafter, some of the large collaborations like our own trade project, but also the big IMI eTrix uh, project here in Europe, uh, decided to adopt uh, Transmart as their internal data sharing environment. And around that time, there was also a foundation uh, started, the Transmart Foundation, that maintains uh, the software. Um, what happened in the meantime is that also the, the Transmart Foundation uh, merged with uh, the I2B2 Foundation, which is a, a, a kind of sibling organization. And I will sp spend a few more words on that uh, later uh, in this talk. Huh? Okay, just a few screenshots to give you um, a flavor of uh, what Transmart looks like. So the, um, the user interface may, may not be that spectacular, but it's um, very well organized. So on the left-hand side, you see your, you see your data fields uh, organized in a tree, which looks very similar to the, uh, the Windows Explorer. And on the right-hand side, you see the different analytics methods that are available. So what you can do is you drag your data from the left-hand side to the panel in the middle, and apply that data to the different analysis. And in this example, it's very uh, trivial. Uh, so it shows the, uh, the age distribution of the participants in this st study. And you can get these, uh, these simple histograms. But the nice thing is you can, can do this on the fly. You can really play with the data without uh, having to define your analysis beforehand in, uh, in a tool like uh, SPSS. Uh, another example, so, uh, when the, the question comes up, do I have DNA data for uh, this group of patients that look very interesting from their um, genetic profile? You, you drag the data to the, uh, the panel in the middle, and then you see how these open source tools interact with each other in, the env in this environment. So these are hyperlinks, you can click on it, and then you can go directly to the, um, to the sample catalog, which is implemented in another open so source tool called Mulgenus. And uh, you can directly order the samples from, uh, from that catalog. So that's the way we implemented these interfaces. Uh, one more example from, uh, from Transmart. Uh, so when you want to uh, compare two subgroups and uh, create a survival uh, analysis uh, on the fly, you can do that and you can see whether uh, a genetic uh, difference makes, um, uh, makes a difference in, uh, in survival between those two groups. Uh, these Kaplan Kapla Meyer plots, you can make them uh, on the fly just comparing whether a certain mutation makes a difference or not in survival of, uh, of cancer patients. Uh, Menno uh, will no doubt uh, show more about this uh, later uh, in this webinar. 
one of the, the critical success factors uh, for adopting a, a tool like Transmart is getting the data in. And that's unfortunately not entirely trivial. Uh, so usually you need the support of a data steward uh, to get this organized. And what you also see in research projects is that the data is often not that well standardized. Um, and then you need um, an expensive pro uh, process called ETL. So extract, transform, load to uh, transform the data in a format that you can load in, uh, into Transmart. Uh, so the, the community spent lots of time uh, over the last a couple of years to optimize this process and to make it less labor intense and make it more scalable. Um, so there is software that supports you with this, uh, this process. And what we also did in, uh, as part of the Corbell project is define uh, a large number and uh, define and describe a large number of standard data definition uh, templates that you can use. Um, and when you conform to these templates, then it is easy to upload it. And we created those templates for all common uh, common data um, types that that you want to uh, upload to Transmart, uh, like microarray data, but all also all kinds of omics data that you may want to upload. Uh, and for the yeah, for most data, these are Excel type uh, templates, but also for the more complex data like uh, genomics data, it can be uh, something like a VCF file. Uh. So move, moving to more complex data, uh, so Transmart has a simple built-in genomics viewer, but what you see then is that the visualizations in Transmart are not that uh, that slick um, and uh, transparent as you may want uh, to have. And um, so this is about as good as it gets in uh, in Transmart. Uh, so that's why uh, we also introduced a second uh, open source tool in this domain, and which is called CBioPortal, which has a, a, a more advanced uh, gene-centric data integration visualization capability. Uh, for example, in the view you see here, every line, which may be gray or colored, is a patient. And it's the same patient across all the genetic variants. So you can really compare the, the different pro, uh, profiles across patients and across cohorts. Um, and this is only one of the many views that are available in CBioPortal. It has been developed for oncology. Uh, and I think it's predominantly used in oncology, although there is no reason uh, why it shouldn't work in other uh, uh, disease types. Uh, but in practice, you see that uh, the usage is uh, mostly limited uh, to oncology at this time. Uh, it was developed uh, by uh, an, one of the large cancer centers in the US, the Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center. And it was uh, really created for this purpose. So sharing, visualizing, uh, and uh, analyzing uh, large uh, cancer genomics data sets. And uh, it has two uh, two purposes. Uh, first of all, it's a, a public site where you can download and view uh, large public genomics uh, data sets. For example, the TCGA set uh, is available through CB C BioPortal. But it's also a, a software, an open source software that you can download yourself and can use for your internal research uh, projects. And that's what we did, for example, in the trade and, uh, and Corel projects. Um, it's uh, open source since 2015 and maintained by a community since that, uh, that time. Um, and what you see in the last couple of years, at least in this country, is, and I know also in the US, is that it's also used uh, in the clinical setting, so in clinical genomics. So when you want to look at, um, at rare genomics um, variants and you want to share those between uh, hospitals, then you can also use C Bioport. Uh, yeah, another few of the nice visualizations uh, available in uh, C Bioportal. Uh, Menno will talk, tell more about that uh, in his demo. Um, then uh, in the last couple of slides, um, a bit more about the direction that uh, the Transmart is taking. And so I already told you that uh, I2B2 and Transmart uh, communities are, have merged again uh, to one uh, open source community with a lot, one foundation. And actually I2B2 was originally the basis of Transmart. Uh, Transmart is an add-on on top of I2B2, uh, which makes I2B2 
suitable for uh, genomics data, which was not the case in uh, in the original tool and is still not the case in the original tool. But I2B2 is still a widely used open source tool for clinical research, data warehousing, uh, and data sharing. That's um, in, in particular in the US, but also for example in Germany, it's, uh, it's used a lot. And, uh, and for example in the US, they have uh, more than 250 million uh, data patient data points in it, uh, and it's used over uh, hundreds of hospitals. Uh. So this uh, this merger is potentially a very um, a very powerful uh, combination. And what you see now is that um, by by rejoining the tools which have been separated over the last couple of years we get instead of one single tool we get an ecosystem where different user interfaces can work on, on top of the same database huh? and that's the situation the community the, the direction this, the community is taking right now and uh, the existing transmart application that will be demoed by uh, meno is uh, what they call now transmart app but you could also use the i2b2 uh, web client on top of the database and there are other uh, tools you could use on top of it. Uh, so the uh, the advantage of this is that we get more flexibility. The disadvantage is that some of the developments that are done in another user interface will not immediately benefit us when we are using a when we made a different choice. So there is also the danger of uh, diverging paths uh, here, and we will see where this is uh, is going in the in the years to come. Uh. One more example of another user interface. This is a user a glowing bear, a user interface developed by um, a software company in the, the Hive, which is part of the, the community around these uh, open source com tools. Um, it's a company here based in, uh, in the Netherlands, and they created a, a user interface uh, on top of the Transmart database that is more suited for time series data, and they, um, they uh, release it under the name glowing bear. Eh? Um, I'm not going to highlight other uh, open source tools that we uh, that we connected in uh, to this, but one I want to briefly mention, and that's XNet. It's a very large uh, open source uh, community. Um, it's a tool that we also use in Corbel for image uh, sharing, and it's also integrated to uh, to Transmart. And um, I think it's the open source tool to share uh, imaging data in the world. Um, and so when you are all in your project also have imaging data, then uh, this is a choice to look at. Um, so I just wanted to quickly um, mention it in, uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, so when you want to do this, uh, one thing that we learned in, uh, in the Netherlands is that um, yeah, these open source tools are not entirely trivial. So um, when you want to attract a large user community and want to support that uh, in a shared uh, service fashion, then you really need a service desk. Uh, and that's one thing we did. And this service desk is, uh, is the connecting pin, the linking pin with uh, all the, um, the uh, development staff that's, uh, that's in the background. And they, uh, they keep track of, uh, of all the problems that may arise and, the, and all the user questions that we get. Um, so that's the way we organized it uh, here locally. Yeah. And that's part of, um, and that brings me to the final slide of my introduction uh, on these uh, open source tools. So that's part of a larger initiative that we take, um, and that's called Helvari. And I just wanted to spend one slide on it, um, where we bring the services of all the research infrastructures in the, in the medical sciences domain and bring together under one service desk and one uh, web portal. Uh, and where these trade uh, services uh, are part of, uh, but also the other infrastructures that are collaborating in Corbel, like um, Elixir, um, EA, EATRUS, BBRI, etc. So with that, um, that comes to the end of my uh, uh, talk in this, uh, this webinar. Thank you for your attention. Um, we decided to, um, to uh, have all the questions at the end of the webinar, so please feel free to enter your questions already in the uh, in the panel, uh, and then uh, Vera will uh, will uh, raise them at the end. But for now, I want to uh, to hand over to Menno uh, for his demo. Uh. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very very much for the for the introduction. So my name is indeed Menno de Vries, and I'm a data steward at the Netherlands Cancer Institute. And in practice, I um, help a lot of people. Uh, a lot of scientists mostly in getting their data in these tools, the tools that uh, Jan Willem described. So 
I'm involved in this big project that Jomeno called Health Hawaii. And there are two tools specifically uh, that we use on uh, for, for researchers for the fair data stewardship. And there are Transmart and CBI portal. Um, we both use them for final data. So no raw data, just final called data. Now, question is, of course, what's the big difference between these two tools? Um, and one of the main advantages of Transmart is that you can uh, use it basically for cohort studies. And CBIA portal, you really uh, use CBIA portal when you're talking about gene level data. So that's basically the one, the two big difference between these two tools. Usually, um, when I uh, sit with a researcher, I usually uh, propose to use both tools um, because they both have their advantages. Uh, but they both do have different analyses and visualizations. Okay, so now I go to my web browser and I probably should log in again. Yes, yeah, so this is our login screen in uh, for Transmart for the health AI. And this is how it looks like. Um, you can, you've already seen some uh, screenshots, but to take you a little bit along with it, um, here on this side of the screen, we can see folders and these folders, they contain studies. So here I can see studies, the one that are light gray, I do not have access to, and the ones that are uh, highlighted, they I do have access to. And for example, we have private studies and we have public studies, and those are the ones that everyone has access to. And here I can see two studies. And if I open this up, I can see folders. And the folders, they uh, show us the data nodes that we have. So for example, for this study called Decode WP5, um, I, can I see that I have clinical data and I have molecular data. And I can open up these folders, and at the end, I will end up with these kind of nodes that you can see here an ABC and here a one to three, which says that this is a categorical node, and this one to three it's a numerical, a numerical node. Now, if you you can wonder, okay, but if I open up Transmart for the for the first time and I do not know the studies, how would I know which study uh, is what? Uh, or is about what I can uh, show some uh, get some explanation on it because if I do right click I can see a button that says show definition and if I press on it I can get a lot of information regarding this study so I get the, the name the short description uh, the, the link to the clinical trials a lot of PubMed links etc now, let's uh, do a little bit of analysis first. So what you have here in this screen is, uh, this is the big advantage of Transmart. You can make cohorts. So you can make two subsets and you can compare them. So let's make, for example, a cohort of female versus male. Um, and we can even expand it because now you see these extra boxes open up. I can drag, for example, age on it. I get another pop-up which asks me what specifically do I want from this node. And I can say, well, let's take all females older than 50 years. Now, and I have in here all females older than 50 years. I can do the same one for male. So it's also older than 50 years. And if I now go to over here, you can see that here these are all tabs. And if I go, for example, the tab summary statistics. I can get an overview of my two cohorts. And it gives me by a histogram, by a box plot, uh, by another graph, which shows for here only female, only male, which is because I selected that. And what I can do is I can get a more um, feeling in my data by dragging in nodes from this folder tree into the screen. So for example, this VAO performance status, if I just drag it in here, it quickly gives me a pop-up with uh, a bar, a graph bar on this data. And I see here, this is for the subset one, which were the females, and these are the males. Now I can do it also for other stuff, like for example, metastasis. Let's do metastasis location. Uh, I can uh, get another graph. 
Now let's take, for example, this one. Uh, this is a numerical node, so it gives me, um, again, box plots and histograms. Now, let's, for example, do another one. Uh, overall survival, for example. And you can also see that it quickly gives me also a t-test. So here it says, t-test demonstrated results are not significant. So apparently in this study, there's no significant difference in overall survival between male and female. So in this way, I can get a clear overview of my data structure, structured in Transmart. Now, but of course, as you can see here, I only see a graph, I don't see exact data points. How do I see data points? Well, then I can go to the next step, which is here, grid view. And if I have here grid view, I can see uh, it in more tabular format. So if I now drag in overall survival for each patient, I can see the exact uh, number of uh, the overall survival. Um, but I can also do it with others. For example, here, lab results, a blood value. Now, here I see don't see anything, which is because it's uh, no values for it. But if I scroll down, I can see that these patients over here have these values. Um, now, I can also do this for other studies. Yes. So let's take, for example, another study, trait cell line, uh, which is a cell line study because I can only do, also do cell lines. Um, so here you can see all the different cell lines that I have in here. Now, let's take the whole study and I just like this. If I go this, I see the statistics of the whole study. I can see, for example, the origin of the tissue. Now, see that it has three different origin. And there's a third type of data node that Transmart uh, can also work with, with, which is the genetic data. Now, then I go to molecular profiling and I see that I have protein expression, DNA expression, RNA expression. Well, let's take, for example, RNA. And um, we get then this type of format. So this is not an ABC or a 1 to 3. This is a uh, DNA helix which is uh, my genetic data, which says that here I see 14, which it says for 14 subjects, I have genetic data. And if I drag this in here, I get another pop-up and it asks me for a gene. Well, let's take, uh, for example, uh, familiar gene, ORCA, and I get it in box plot form. However, I only, as you can see, I only get it now for one, let's do another one, uh, for only one gene. So what if you want to do more than one gene in your analysis? In that case, I can have more tabs. For example, I have the advanced workflow, which is one of the screenshots that John Willem already showed you. I can see, you can see here all the different types of analysis that I can do. Heat maps, gene prints, uh, survival plots, uh, line graphs. But I can also uh, go to this one, Smart R, which is more interactive types of uh, graphs, and here I guess see I have box plots, correlations, heat maps, uh, volcano plots. Now let's in this case do a box plot, and now I can actually make a graph. So let's drag this one in here. It's called a high dimensional variable, and here I can type in my biomarkers. Yeah, so let's do again the ones that I did just then, but now I can do all of them. Now let's do another one more familiar genes, I say fetch data, I have to wait a little bit, you can also see that I can also add categorical and numerical variables, but for now let's just keep to this one, yes, it says complete, I go to an analysis, create plot, and I can see here my box plots from the four genes I selected, BRCA2, TP43, BRCA1, and ORCA, um, but now I get them all into the same box plot, and if I want to uh, see them more closely, uh, you can see if I hold uh, hover over my mouse, you can see all the data points. I can also do this, and then I get more into detail. Like this. So that's basically uh, Transmart.
in very short, um, yeah, one of the things indeed that uh, uh, Jan Willem also showed was the genome browser, which is over here, which is a uh, an overview of the of the genome. You can, for example, drag in uh, the nucleotide variants. Let's drag those in, and I get a certain uh, way of showing genetic data. But therefore, we also have, since this is a very limited view, CBIA portal. So let's go to CBIA portal. This is CBIA portal, cbiaportal.org. It's uh, you can all go there to this website. You will also see this screen. Now, how does this work? Um, so here, in, in contrast to Transmart, uh, there's no folder tree. Yet. Transmart works with these folders trees on the on the left bar, but here. I can see all the studies over here, and these are all public studies. Now, I can also search for a certain study, of course. You can see that they have got reference everywhere. Uh, let's see for a glioma study, because as John Willem told, it is mainly used by uh, oncology. Now, I can see here some studies of uh, glioma studies. Let's take this one. And then I can see that for this study, I have mutation data. Well, if I would click another one, for example, this one, I see that I have mutations data and copy number alterations. Well, this one, uh, I even have an RNA expression. Now, let's stick to this one for now. Um, over here, I can select uh, which are one. Now, in this case, all patients in this study have mutation data. And over here, I can even select genes. I can select pathways. Glioma pathways, for example, or I can type in by myself. But for now, not directly going into the genes, um, I can go click on view summary. Yeah, I've selected the study. I can now go to click view summary, and I get a summary of this study. And this is uh, this you might recognize from one of the slides that John Willem showed you. So here on the left. Uh, you can see the different types of gliomas that are in here, an overall survival curve, mutation data. Yeah, so for 50 patients, they have mutation in this gene, and nine patients have mutation in this gene. But here, uh, while well, in Transmart I was on this cohort making, uh, we don't know that from CBI portal, but we have these type of charts. And these are uh, interactive charts. For example, I can click on it. Here we see the chart of sex. Now I can see 60 male, 7 female. If I click female, then all the other histograms are adapting to my selected female. And if I did, for example, male, I get different charts. They're all adapting to what I just selected. And even more, you can see it gives me a survival curve of the selection I made. So red are the selected patients, in this case male, and blue are the unselected patients. Now, I can clear or filter over here. Um, so that's how in Shibai portal, you can get a quick overview on how uh, your data looks like. Now I can even look into more detail. I can click on clinical data over here. And now I get the patient overview, which was in Transmart what we call the grid view. And here uh, it's called the clinical data. And here you see all the patient IDs and a short overview of their status. Yeah, for example, most of them are diseased. And I can click even on a certain patient and then see the personal uh, record of these patients in a couple of ways. I can see over here a timeline, over here uh, the mutation data in this genome. Yeah, so here you have 1 to uh, 22 X and I, so these are the chromosomes. And here I can see even the exact protein changes. So I can see which uh, proteins were actually changed and what type of mutation, allele frequency, etc. And over here in this timeline, they even give me information like, uh, for example, here radiographic progression happened and here during year two, uh, there was a chemotherapy going on, and here another chemotherapy, and here another uh, certain type of treatment. Um, and again, radiographic progression, and here we have uh, diseased at the end. 
So that's in patient view how I can, how I can uh, see it. Now, let's go back to the beginning. One final thing before we go on to questions. Um, I select the same study, but this time I won't go to view summary. Now I will go to over here and select these genes. So I select all samples with mutation data, which in this case are everyone. And let's take a pathway and it gives me four genes. I can even more enter more and then it will say if these are valid or not. Now in this case, you recognize all of them. I can submit query and now I get different types of uh, tabs. So no uh, overview or clinical data. N now I get certain types of analysis. So I get the onco print, and here I can see an overview of uh, the mutations in my cohort. So here's the legenda, and each bar is a patient. So this is patient 07, patient 24, and I can even sort them. So I can add clinical tracks. So for example, uh, gender. Now I have gender added. So of course uh, these are female, these are males. I can sort them sort now i get all the females together all the males together i can even add more let's say for example diagnosis age can even also sort them also now, now it sorts age within male female can also sort it above it in other way so now diagnosis age is sorted um, and i can get an overview of my data now of all these other types of tabs. I'm not going into detail right now because you can also search for yourself. Plots, for example, if you have uh, expression data, very handy. Um, one final thing, mutation, for example, if I want to get an overview of the mutation from uh, all the patients, yeah, because in the previous one, I first had mutation data of only one patient, but now I have of multiple patients. So let's take, for example, TP53 gene, and I can see all these lollipops where mutations have occurred within my cohort. And here I can see an overview, for example, all the patients, the cancer types, the exact protein change, uh, exactly what kind of uh, type of mutation. So now you can see that although they have all mutated within the P53 gene, um, there are differences between the different types of protein changes. So that's basically in short, uh, a short overview of the bioportal. Let's go back to my uh, presentation. Yes. Okay. Um, so to give you a final overview of what are exactly the difference between Transmart and CBI portal. Uh, Transmart, it's really uh, has a static folder structure uh, format. Well, on CBI portal, we have this interactive charts. Uh, Transmart really works with drag drop selections. Uh, well, on CBI portal, we have to actually click on this chart. Um, if you want to go to patient mode, really patient view in Transmart, you have this quit view. In CBiport, that, that's more advanced because you can actually continue on patient level, see the longitudinal version of their uh, history, medical history. Um, Transmart, big advantages is the cohort comparison that you can select two cohorts. Well, in CBiport, it's only selected and non selected. Um, if you have different types of uh, or actually want to export it. I didn't show you in a demo, but here's in short. In Transmart, you can uh, export your data in different types of formats. For example, Excel, SPSS, or CSV, or other types. When CBI port, you only have uh, the option for text files. So at the end, it all comes down to the fact that Transmart is most useful for clinical data, while CBI portal is very useful for genetic data. Um, so this was a uh, overview of uh, Transmart CBI portal. 
and uh, specifically Transmart for everyone uh, that's very interest, interested, uh, please be aware that somewhere in the fall 2019, uh, we will organize a training for Transmart. Uh, we will organize a training for users on more advanced way on actually learning to use it. You, you will get an account, you will actually do stuff and uh, make analyzes by yourself. Uh, but we also have a training for data stewards, for the people like me who are actually preparing data and uploading data, structuring it for Transmart, so that you can actually use it. And then we come uh, to uh, the final slide. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you both. So what we'd like to do now is had a few people um, add questions to the um, question panel. If you've got additional questions, please add them now. Um, we have um, a few minutes left. So um, the first question that we've actually had a few people um, add similar questions is, how can I use the software for my study or my pro project? And also the question of who is eligible to receive help desk support through, for instance, trade? Is it just Dutch projects or EU-based organizations? Okay, good questions. Shall I take them? Um, so, um, yes, to, to start with the last one. So, uh, trade is really targeting uh, projects with uh, a connection to the Netherlands. So, either a Dutch-based uh, project or a project that has a, a strong Dutch uh, involvement. Uh, albeit maybe an international project. Uh, the reason for that is uh, basically in one of the last slides is that we support is very important and we organize this support uh, locally and it's very hard to support a project that's, uh, that's very distant. Uh, so um, we would love uh, to see similar initiatives in other countries and we are aware of some uh, similar initiatives in other countries. So. You may want to look around in your own country uh, when you uh, you look for uh, a similar organization. Uh, uh, and so also one of the reasons we organized this training uh, later this year to help other initiatives uh, to set up uh, a, a Transmart uh, support service in, uh, in, in other countries. Huh? Um, having said that, uh, of course, you can uh, download the software and install yourself. Um, please be aware that um, yeah, this may require some uh, expertise. It's not something that um, the average clinical scientist will do by themselves. You, you need some support of uh, yeah, more technical uh, oriented people uh, or, um, and, and uh, data steward like people like, uh, like Menno. Uh, I would really recommend uh, to have them on board. Fortunately, many institutes have those people uh, nowadays. Uh. So that would be my answer to these questions. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, other questions we have is specifically to the Transmart demo. Um, you show drag and drop. Are you comparing data from different studies? Uh, I guess it's a question for me. So, question was uh, drag and drop from different studies. Is a, if different studies possible? That's the question, right? I think so, yes. No, I, okay. think, I think the question was what, what you were showing in your demo, whether it was within one study or between studies. Huh? No, this was really within one study. Um, so a cross-trial uh, comparison between different studies, um, yeah, that is, that is possible, but only if both studies are using the same ontologies. Uh, otherwise, you, you can't compare, really. So... Um, for example, uh, a certain type of uh, parameter from a tumor, um, do that both studies use the same definition? Then you can, uh, only then it's uh, meaningful to compare different studies, of course. Okay, and then we've got another question on how to integrate patient data from Transmart and the genetics data in CBIO portal. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, uh... That's a good question, eh? because um, yeah, the tools have slightly different um, uh, scopes and uh, it would be ideal when you would have a kind of best of breed uh, where you can use both uh, next to each other. Um, we played around with it, but didn't really succeed. So what we 
did in, in uh, one or two studies is upload uh, the data to both tools and then you could use um, either tool uh, when you wish to, but that's quite cumbersome. Uh, Menno, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so uh, what I always um, propose to scientists is to use both, uh, both tools and not just one. That's in oh. short. But it, it is not seamless in the practice, uh, unfortunately. It's not that uh, you have a C bio portal button in uh, in Transmart, uh, and then you go with the, with your sub cohort or so, you go further in uh, in C bio portal. Uh. That was uh, an ideal no, we had at some point. That's an ideal world, uh, but you aren't uh, there yet. No. That's uh, that is not present. No. Okay, then we've got another question on how much disk space it takes per genome. <laughs> I actually don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, so we, we don't load the uh, the raw data. So that's uh, the quick answer. So the, the amount of disk space is not spectacular. So it's the cold data we load. So it's not so um, it's not like, uh, for example, uh, XNAT where you load uh, large uh, imaging data sets, there you really uh, are in the hundreds of terabytes sometimes. So, you, so the disk space we use for Transmart and C-Bioport is not spectacular, but I don't know the numbers by heart. Do you, uh, Menno? Yeah, for, for C-Bioport I don't know, but for Transmart it's always below 100 MB. Uh, so indeed it's not spectacular uh, amount of size. Okay, then we have a follow-up question to that one, um, is whether it's specific genes that are loaded or not. Menno? Can you repeat the question? It's a follow-up question to the one about the disk space and whether only specific genes are loaded. If what the space is for when you want to upload a specific gene in Cibai No, no. No, no, no. So the question is, so um, when you don't load all the raw data, so what are you loading? Are you only loading specific genes or are you loading more? Eh? No, we only load cold data. Uh, so, so the actually final data of the whole process. Which is more than specific genes. Eh? So, but but not the, uh, the raw uh, sequence uh, data. No, not the raw sequence data, but what the, the actual call data uh, is it mutated as a wild type uh, and even more in detail, like what, which, which protein change, what type of mutation is it. Um, but that's that's the, the, the final call data of the whole pipeline, not uh, not the raw data in the beginning. There we, uh, within uh, HealthRI, we use other tools for that, for storing the raw data, like uh, EGA, for example. Okay, then we've got a slightly different question. Will installing the software locally result in access to the available public data sets? <laughs> to my knowledge, uh, no. Um, if you want to install, install a local version, uh, you have your local version, but then you need to uh, uh, load your local data in it, of course. But the public data, you already have access to it by just going to cbiportal.org and then uh, there are all, uh, all the public uh, studies. And uh, you can, of course, download those public studies and upload them in your local server. That's, uh, that's possible, of course. Okay, then we've got probably time for one last question. Can you explain what your process was to make the websites more user-friendly? <laughs> um. Uh, so, um, first of all, uh, these are open source tools maintained by a community. Uh, so, for neither of them, we are the main developer. Uh, and certainly not for CBioPortal. There, we are just um, yeah, users uh, in the community that make use of the software. But uh, yeah, the lead developers are in, in the cancer centers in the US uh, and some other uh, uh, centers. For Transmart, we have been involved in some uh, development in, in the community over the years. And um, the priorities we set there 
were really the the, the priorities of our uh, um, driving uh, use cases. So we had some of the projects, uh, like the decode project, where um, Menno showed some examples out. Uh, and functionality that came up in these projects uh, really determined uh, the, the contributions we had to, to the community. Yeah? So that's in short uh, what set our priorities. Okay, in that case, thank you very much. That's the end of the um, question and answer session. I'd like to thank both Jan Willem and Menno to be our speakers today and to thank everyone for attending. Before you go, I would like to just make you aware of the next webinar. We actually have the next one next week on Tuesday, and that will be towards GDPR Code of Conduct for Health Research. Where are we today? And that will be with Michaela Meyerhofer from BBMRI Eric, and she will give us a status update. We'll start slightly earlier than today. We're starting at um, 2.30 Central European summertime. So in which case, thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Bye.